Hi, my name is Jeff. Uh, I am a biology teacher. Um, I'm relatively new to the area. I teach biology and currently um, act as a consultant for tech companies in the Bay Area regarding sleep physiology. So this is my background. Um, I attended the University of Washington. The reason I'm showing you this is because the University of Washington is a very special place uh, for biology education right now. Okay, within the UW, there is what's called the Biology Education Research Group. Okay, so for a long time, uh, research scientists, people who go in and ablate cells and study DNA, they're the ones teaching biology. And recently we found out that maybe these aren't the best people to be educating our kids. But if you did uh, AP Biology 40 years ago, maybe you're not the best person to be teaching AP Biology today. You see what I'm saying? So because of special um, groups like this, they care about how students learn. So this is made up of uh, former scientists who now study how do students learn biology. So what are the better ways? What are the ways that aren't as good? And now we have a lot of research that shows statistical significance of ways that we can learn and think about biology. Okay? And I basically boil this down to two ways. Um, which we're going to talk about. But first, uh, in my experience with students, uh, having the appropriate mindset is very important into going into AP Biology and College Biology. Okay. Um, I have a lot of very brilliant students who are very good at memorizing, and then they do very poorly when I ask them complex questions. Does this sound familiar? People have probably mentioned this a lot, right? So. Uh, in my opinion, the more negative mindset is how do I get an A and pass the AP Biology exam? Okay, this should be a goal for everybody, right? You, yes, getting an A plus would be fantastic. Passing the bi AP Biology exam is very important, but this does not lead you very far if this is all you think about. Okay, so more importantly, we should be thinking about how can I increase my performance over time? Okay, because what it might take. The changes it might take one student to do well is different than another student. So each person individually needs to think about how they can increase their performance over time. And when this becomes the focus, uh, your education increases, your ability to perform increases, and ultimately, yeah, your, like your life in biology, everything gets better. Okay? I promise this is, this is a mindset to have going into AP Biology, especially going into college. Okay? Great, so this is uh, cut off a little bit, but this is just an example. Um, a lot of my mentors that I've worked with have been on uh, boards at the University of Austin, Texas for medical schools. So they get these resumes and they say, okay, students did well and they're going to medical school or a rejection letter, okay? Um, college professors, people in labs that look at your transcript, uh, medical school, uh, jobs that you apply for, almost everybody would prefer this person who maybe has an average lower score compared to this person who moves up and down. Okay, So the goal for us really should be to progress over time. Okay? If I'm going to hire an employee to work for me, I want this person. Right? You should aim to be this student because it shows that when things are difficult, that you can progress and get better through time. So this should be your focus in biology, especially AP biology, but how do we do that, right? How can you increase your performance over time? Uh, I boil this down basically to two different things, because everyone's given material for AP biology, right? Is anyone here AP students right now? Biology students, can you raise your hand? Anyone's taken a science class ever? <laughs> yeah, even parents, don't be shy. Yes? Okay, good. You guys taking science classes? Great. So, how do you do this? This is the difficult part, right? Everyone tells you, stop memorizing. Okay, cool. What does that mean? What can I do? Everyone says, increase your performance over time. Get better. Okay, how do I do that? So, these are the two ways that I have found success in my own life and for all of my students also, they found success with these steps, okay? Studying is a huge key. Not how much you're studying, but specifically how you're studying and when you're studying is much more important, okay? 
and also how to think about biology. And this is really the most difficult thing for any human to do. Okay, I tutor college students, they have a very difficult time thinking about biology. But there's a way we can do it, and we're going to explore this in the next few minutes. Okay? So, first of all, studying. You remember I mentioned the biology, biology education research group at the University of Washington. So, um, and among other places, there's lots of research papers out there. If anyone's interested, you can email me, find my email through a uh, principal, and uh, I'd be happy to show you the research articles that support everything I'm talking about. Okay, I like sharing biology information. So basically, this is uh, most how most students study, right? Don't take a picture yet. I promise, wait, there's a punchline, okay? So uh, they read their book, right? Go over your notes, going over the lecture slides the teacher gave you, and studying for long, long hours. Sometimes this happens the day before the exam. Does this sound familiar? Yeah? Okay, good. This is statistically the absolute worst way to study. Okay? And this is proven with a significant p-value. This is like, now this is part of science. Like, this is not a good way to do things. I'm not saying never to do them. There is a time to read, there's a time to go over your notes, and there's a time to refer back to your lecture slides. But this should not be our focus, especially in AP and college biology. Okay? So, what are some other things we could do instead? These are statistically shown to be the best things you can do uh, for learning really any subject, not just biology. But biology, in my opinion, is one of the most difficult subjects. And we'll get into that in a few minutes. But practice problems is a great way. Okay? It's very important to do lots of practice problems. Usually your teachers supply you with these. If, you, if your teacher's not giving it to you, we have this thing now, it's amazing, called the internet, and there's so much work on the internet to be done. Right? There's all sorts of problems you can get for AP and college biology. Okay? Practice tests. This is a little different, but um, it's very important to go into a test having done that before. Right? If you go to sit down at your first test and you've never had those feelings before, it can be difficult. Right? Your heart starts beating fast, it's difficult to think. But if you've been with your friends studying and you set a timer, we're gonna do this in 20 minutes, and you make a fake test and you take that test, when you go to sit down in your seat, you've done that before now, okay? You've made those neural connections in your brain. Okay, so this is another fantastic way. And then these last two, free recall, we're gonna go in depth into free recall. I think this is single-handedly the most important thing you can do for learning anything. And like I said before, there's lots of neuroscience papers that support this. Um, so if you're interested in uh, any research papers about free recall, I'd be happy to supply you with them. And then also, chunking study sessions. Okay? So chunking is the opposite of long, last-minute study sessions. We will get into more of what this means. And it's important to study often and consistently. Okay? That doesn't mean you're studying all day and all night. Okay. So when the phones go down, we can <laughs> feel free to okay. get out of your way. All right. So free recall. Uh, like I said, this is the most important thing as a student you can do uh, to learn really anything. Okay. Uh, neuroscientists have proven this is statistically the best way to learn something. Okay. So this is my free recall. Let's hide that for a second. We'll go back to that. So this is what you do. And by the way, I did this this morning for a student. They had a, a topic that I've not done for about a year. So last night I read and this morning I went and spent 15 minutes and I did my free recall. Now if you ask me a question about the subject, I have it in my brain ready to go. Okay. So uh, what you'll do is take a timer, 10 minutes, find a whiteboard or a piece of paper and you sit there with no notes, no help, no nothing, and you put down everything you know on that paper about the subject that you wanted to do. Okay? So if you're doing AP Biology, maybe you choose Cardiac Physiology. You put down everything you know about Cardiac Physiology on that paper. Okay? Ten minutes go by, maybe you have something that looks like this. This is a free recall I did. This is uh, for the kidney and heart function connected together. So connecting those two systems. Uh, this takes me maybe 15 minutes. Um, 
this is really what's valuable about free recall. Remember I said there's a time to go back and read and look at your lecture slides, right? This is not the majority of your studying time. If I did this in 15 minutes, maybe on this part here, which shows ions moving across a certain part of the kidney, I get halfway through it in my free recall and I'm going, oh man, I can't remember the name of that thing. I really, I can't remember. I need to struggle and go through that. And then if I spend more than 45 seconds, I'll put a big star by it and I'll move on and keep going. At the end of 10 minutes, you can look at your sheet, be very proud of yourself, give yourself a pat on the back, and then you can go, okay, what didn't I remember? Okay, I didn't remember this thing. I didn't remember that thing. That's when you go back to your notes and look. That's when you go back to lecture slides and say, okay, this is the thing that I now need to study. Okay? Students, you guys are students. What do you get to take into exams? Do you have a pencil? <laughs> Paper? Okay, and what else? What do you get to bring in? Our memory. You get to bring in your brain. <laughs> right? If you have not practiced getting information out of your brain onto paper without notes, books, and lecture slides, you cannot expect yourself to exceed on an AP exam or any exam in life, right? So when you do free recall, you're strengthening the neural connections that allow you to exceed on tests. Does this make sense? Yes. So this is the two main factors of uh, why this is very successful for students. One, uh, well three, one, it saves time, okay? Two, you're going to practice putting down what you know. So on a test, you've already done that 30, 40 times. And three, it's going to show you what you don't know and really what you need to study. This is a big problem with students I found. I say, what do you need help on? They say, oh, I don't understand anything, but I don't even know what I don't know, <laughs> right? This is a technique to figure that out. It's incredibly important in biology, okay? So we talked about chunking. Uh, chunking is a memory technique. It's very helpful, it's a study technique. Um, this is also statistically proven, so if you're interested in the papers and neuroscience, I can supply you with these. But uh, essentially, chunking is when you study every day, but for a short amount of time, okay? Let's say we have two students, uh, one student A and B. A is going to chunk, and they're going to study 10 minutes on kidney function for seven days. And the other student is gonna study for uh, three hours, two times a week. Six hours total. They studied a lot more time. Every time, the student who studied 10 minutes every day will do better, okay? This is how we build neural connections in our brain. Uh, this is how you will succeed in biology, okay? If you wait till the night before, it will not work. So, in regards to AP biology, if you want to do AP Biology, or you're doing College Biology, or you're taking a final exam in any other course, it's important that you jump between the subjects within Biology, Chemistry, whatever you're doing, okay? On an AP exam, it may ask you about the electrical system of a heart. The next question is going to be about Ecology, okay? If you only studied heart on one day, and three days later you study Ecology, you're not used to thinking about them together and going from one to the next one to the next one. Does that make sense? So you must be able to transition between areas in biology smoothly. And you can only do that if you have studied that way. Okay? So you study often. It does not need to be hours long, right? 30 minutes is a great study session. If you do 30 minutes every day, you do so well if you're doing it correctly. Okay? And you need to jump between subjects within biology when preparing for exams, especially cumulative AP exams. Okay? So that's studying. This is the hard part. How to think about biology. Um, this is, yeah, probably a picture will not do well for this one. <laughs> this is more a story. Okay? So how to think about biology is the toughest thing I found uh, with students, especially students that start to take 400 level classes in the university. Okay, so I have a short story for you. You guys can play along also. And it ties into ultimately how we think about biology. 
So these are two birds, right? The small bird and the big bird. Um, in, in evolution, we talk about surviving and reproducing. Okay? If you look around the planet, humans are very good at this. Right? We're good at getting food and, and making babies. There's, there's lots of people everywhere. So uh, a bird's life is essentially to find food and to uh, have bird babies to pass on genetics. Right? So this big bird is stealing food from the little bird. Okay? Um, just take, take five seconds, turn to your neighbor who you're here with, who is going to be able to survive and reproduce better in this scenario? The big bird stealing food or the little bird getting food stolen from them? Talk, talk to your neighbor about five seconds. <laughs> <Tell them. laughs> Okay, yes, sir, what do, you, what, what do you think? It's the big bird. Yes, the big bird, right? It's going to steal this little guy's food. He's going to be sad. I think already this is his girlfriend. But, um, <laughs> you've got some food. We're going to go hang out and, um, and yeah, we're going to be birds. So, <laughs> right? In the context where there's lots of food, in this context, the big bird will survive and reproduce. Okay? We're going to flash forward two years. All right, this little bird, he survived, but he's kind of sad. All of a sudden, there's no rain this year. Okay? There's no rain, the crops are bad. There's very little food, there's a famine. Okay? This big bird has a high metabolic rate. Like you see like a bodybuilder, those guys eat a lot of food. Right? This bird, if he does not get a lot of food, he will die quickly. So in the year where there's famine, this bird dies first. And the other small bird, who can survive off tiny little bits of food he can find here and there, now he will survive, now he will reproduce. Now he will have maybe a bird girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever, okay? But what is different about these stories is I asked one question, who will survive and who will uh, pass on the genetics better, right? In order to answer the question, it's all about the context. Okay. Is there a lot of food in one year? Is there little food in one year? This is a very simple way to think about this, but it's called context-dependent thinking. Okay. And this is the hardest thing to teach a student how to do. Okay. But it's something that you need to do to succeed in AP Biology and also Biology at the university level. Okay. So we just talked about the most simple context-dependent thinking. Uh, in Biology, we call this a fitness trade-off. But essentially, it was in two different scenarios, we have different outcomes based on how much food is available. Okay? But what happens when you're talking about DNA replication, the electrical conductive system of the heart, right? kidney function, action potentials, neuronal function, things in AP biology that you need to know inside and out, and not just one thing like there's no food, maybe four or five different variables moving at the same time. You need to be able to dissect those things and understand what's going on and think context dependently within those big systems. And this is difficult and usually high school students, they need help with this because their teacher cannot devote enough time to give them the information and teach them how to think about biology. So uh, this is the, by far the most critical skill in biology and also just to be a good human being. I think our world would be a better place. Okay. So um, if you want to write something down, I don't know if you have a pen, but um, I just thought of this. The way I do this for myself is I ask, what is something? I define it. What is this thing? You have a definition. This thing is this. How does it work? What is the mechanism? Ask yourself, why is it working? And then go a step further and ask, why would it not work? In what scenarios would this thing not work? And if you can answer those four questions, you can uh, think context dependently and can succeed on difficult problems, especially on the AP test. Okay? So, thank you guys. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Good?